This is KGW News at 5. I've been very clear with teachers, I've been very clear with superintendents and parents as well um, that we have thrown uh, every single tool that we have uh, at the problem. Hello friends, welcome on this Friday. Oregon Governor Kate Brown talked today about her efforts to reopen schools amid the pandemic. And she's made some hard decisions along the way, including putting teachers ahead of some seniors, something that's fueled intense anger from many in that age group. She talked one on one with our Pat Doris. Governor Kate Brown sometimes points out she spent most of her political career looking out for the interests of children. Now she's not backing down and will leave in place her policy to put roughly 150,000 educators in front of older Oregonians when it comes to getting the COVID vaccine. She's sticking to her guns even as districts like Beaverton warn their middle school and high schoolers may not return to the buildings this school year. Many of our students need the basics, um, a healthy breakfast and a healthy lunch and a safe, warm place um, to study and the classrooms provide that. So we're doing everything we can to make this happen. But it must be frustrating to be doing everything you can and then have districts like this say, we're not bringing the kids back. Well, Oregon, as you know, is a local control state. Um, we have 197 school districts, and each one of these districts is different. And so they can ignore the governor's wishes to get kids back in classrooms if they want. Still, that decision to put teachers first infuriates many Oregonians 65 and older who point out that it flies in the face of science, the CDC's recommendations, and the actions of most other states. We're one of few states that have put teachers in front of seniors. Do you regret that decision? Look, um, we have put our most vulnerable seniors, um, those in nursing homes and assisted living at the very top of the list. Um, we have gone through and vaccinated uh, every senior who's wanted a vaccine that lives in assisted living, uh, that lives in uh, congregate care and in skilled nursing. But the governor admits it could take four months to vaccinate all those seniors, which means it could stretch until early June. Finally, I asked the governor about the health authority's decision to stop reporting the exact age of those who died from the virus and the date they contracted and the date they die from it. First of all, that's absolutely not the case. Uh, when I learned of the Oregon Health Authority's decision, I directed them to continue to provide both the death counts and the age brackets on a daily basis. We're actually, I believe, the only state in the country that is providing this level of information. And then moving forward, they will provide the more detailed information on a weekly basis. Pat Doris, KGW News. The governor mentioned those seniors in assisted living getting their shots. More of them got the COVID-19 vaccination today. Galen Etlin takes us to a local clinic and looks at the big picture. Music fills the halls of this senior living facility. Feels like a party. Tuxedo and all. Matt Ryan is general manager of the Ackerley at Timberland facility in Portland. He helped plan this vaccination event for months. So the day is here. People living here. I'm so excited. <laughs> have been protecting themselves for nearly a year. We've been in the room, you know, in quarantine for many times. So Jenny Fitzhenry is thankful to get her first dose. I'm looking forward to the next one in three weeks. This mobile vaccination clinic is run by CVS Health. In Oregon, CVS, Walgreens, and locally based Kinsanis Pharmacy are part of a federal vaccine distribution program. They've completed hundreds of clinics, covering nursing homes first. Now, assisted living, memory care, and independent living communities are up. Facilities like the Ackerley had to register for this. All of our competitors out there are doing the same thing. Three clinics are scheduled to make sure staff and residents get both doses. So we can take the first steps in fighting this virus and being done with it. Oregon's skilled nursing homes for more vulnerable patients all completed first doses in mid-January. That was ahead of pharmacies' national goals for the end of January, but nearly a month behind the Trump administration's original plan to vaccinate nursing home residents by Christmas 2020. But the Ackerley calls its interaction with CVS seamless. We communicated how many vaccinations we would need, and they have um, provided those. CVS did not have anyone approved to speak with media locally, but does post vaccination progress online. Walgreens does too, showing thousands of shots completed and thousands yet to be done. In the meantime, 
these seniors are celebrating a successful clinic. The people are really good. One step closer to immunity. As good as it could possibly be. And a party for the history books. Galen Etlin, KGW News. And some welcome news on the vaccine front. Almost 315,000 Oregonians have gotten at least one shot. The Oregon Health Authority says we're at least three quarters of the way through vaccinating people in phase 1A. Oregon says it's making progress vaccinating group 1B, educators, school staff and child care workers. Over the past week, data shows Oregon gave almost 15,000 shots a day, higher than the governor's target. In a press conference today, OHA Director Pat Allen says the feds promised Oregon will get 10,000 more first doses of the Moderna vaccine a week going forward. More than six weeks into our vaccination effort, at our current level of supply, it would take more than 14 weeks to vaccinate all the approximately 1.2 million people who are eligible or will become eligible to be immunized. Oregon ranks 15th in the country for percentage of our population that's gotten at least one shot, but not every county is at the same level. OHA will give different allotments based on county's needs. Taking a look at the number of eligible Oregonians vaccinated in our region, let's look at Marion and Polk counties. They've given shots to more than 8% of their total population. Multnomah and Clackamas counties have vaccinated between 6 and 8% so far. Washington, Columbia, and Yamhill counties have given shots to less than 6% of people who live there. Johnson & Johnson hopes to get emergency authorization for its COVID vaccine within weeks. Here's how it compares to vaccines by Moderna and to Pfizer. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine requires only one shot, while Moderna and Pfizer, as you probably know, require two. Johnson & Johnson says its vaccine is 66% effective at preventing moderate to severe illness and 85% effective at preventing the most serious symptoms. The Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are both about 95% effective at preventing mild to severe symptoms. Johnson & Johnson still needs the green light from the government before it can begin shipping vaccines. If you'd like more information about vaccines, text the word vaccine to 503-226-5088. We'll send you a link to our coverage online that answers a lot of the most commonly asked questions. COVID restrictions are starting to ease a little bit in Oregon. Indoor spots like gyms and movie theaters throughout the state are now allowed to reopen. Governor Kate Brown released the new guidelines earlier this week. The changes allow for six people inside facilities over 500 square feet. Businesses are required to follow cleaning protocols. People are still required to wear masks and practice social distancing. Despite the change in guidelines, several local movie theaters we spoke to say they don't plan to reopen. We also spoke to the owner of Physique Fitness. Most of his gyms in the Salem area are reopening, but he tells us he wants to be able to allow more customers inside. Up to 3,000 square feet, I can have six people in it. But you're saying that as soon as I get to, you know, seven people, regardless of size, it's no longer safe. So six people in 30,000 square feet is safe, but seven people in 30,000 square feet is completely unsafe. This map shows where each county is ranked based on their risk level. The level determines what businesses can open and what have to stay closed. The highest is extreme risk and includes Multnomah County. We want to zero in now on Tillamook County. It went from extreme risk all the way down to the very lowest level, lowest risk for COVID-19 restrictions. And that means restaurants there in Tillamook County are allowed to serve guests once again indoors. We talked to Dan Tata the general manager of Garibaldi's Hook, Line and Sinker. He tells us he's limiting indoor dining to 50% capacity, but says that's better than nothing. I just wish everybody, all the businesses down here, good luck in opening. And we wish yeah, that we can stay open this time. For now, Tillamook is the only county on the North Coast at the lower risk level. Business owners say if you're planning to visit, continue social distancing and wearing a mask so the county can stay safe. Some students in the Estacada School District wrapped up their first week of in-person learning. River Mill Elementary welcomed back its kindergartners and first graders. The school's principal says the first week went smoothly. Lots of smiles. Everyone was excited to be back. Families and parents were excited. 
to have their students back in school. They figured out our routines and procedures by day two. They knew what to do right when they walked in the door. We were so proud of them. Principal Berman also says a lot of teachers and staff members have gotten the COVID vaccine or have an appointment to get a shot. She says since Estacada is one of the first school districts to bring students back, teachers and staff there have the option to vaccinate right away.